Bangladesh is celebrating the 123rd birth anniversary of its national poet, Kazi Nazrul Islam. Poet Nazrul Islam is an iconic figure, not just for Bangladesh, but for the entire South Asian, Asian region, including India, where he was born and spent most of his life. The revolutionary poet is known for his powerful voice against social injustice and communalism. His voice is known for advocating social harmony as well as songs of love and beauty. We have with us Professor Sabiha Haq from Khulna University, Bangladesh, to talk about the relevance of Nazrul as a poet and his contribution in the field of literature. Professor Sabiha Haq has contributed extensively on literature and other subjects in several journals of repute. Welcome, Professor Sabiha Haq and thanks for talking to Doordarshan and All India Radio. How do you look at Nazrul as a poet and his contribution to India, Bangladesh and the entire South Asian region? Thank you so much, Rajesh ji, for having me on this program. And Namaskar to all the viewers and listeners of Doordarshan. It is my privilege to wish a happy birthday to the great rebel poet Kazi Nazrul Islam. He was born on this day in 1899 to celebrate humanity and diversity. To highlight Nizrul's greatness as a writer, I would mention two key features in his writings. He celebrated men and women in the same breath, and he upheld the syncretic spirit of the Indian subcontinent, both of which are very relevant today. Nazrul once wrote, I am the rebels eternal. I raise my head beyond this world, high, ever erect, and alone. So true. The greatest hero is he who can stand alone, and Nazrul could do that. I think the way he promoted gender equality and syncretic ideology is what makes Nazrul a unique voice among the great writers of the Indian subcontinent. He was a progressive poet who believed in equality of men and women. And in his poem titled Nari or Woman, he writes, I sing the song of equality. In my view, gender difference is essentially a triviality. Everything that is great in the world, all the works, beneficial and good, half must be credited to woman and to man, the other half we should attribute. What a great mind. Nazrul's visions of the future are quite clear when he writes, not very far is that cherished day when with homage to man, to woman also homage, the world will pay. Similarly, while living at a time when communalism was on the rise under the divide and rule policy of the British colonizers, Nazrul understood the necessity of a syncretic culture in the subcontinent. He spoke about Hindu-Muslim unity in a way that was unheard before. As a secular poet, he had in-depth knowledge about both, both Hindu mythological characters and heroes of Islamic history. He wrote Hindu devotional songs and Islamic ghazals, composed Shama Sangeet, Bhajan, and Kirtan, and also dedicated a large number of songs invoking Lord Shiva, goddesses Lakshmi and Saraswati, and on the eternal love between Radha and Krishna. On the other hand, he explored the Quran and the life of prophets and caliphs, and created imagery and symbols from the historical Muslim figures like Hazrat Umar, Ali, Qasim, Bilal, and so on. And I would refer to his comment in the editorial of Yugobani, the magazine, where he writes, come brother Hindu, come Musliman, come Buddhist, come Christian, Let's overcome all the obstacles 
let's dispel all meanness for good all lies all selfishness and let's call a brother a brother we'll have no quarrel anymore i think this is a clarion call for communities living in south asia at this moment and only in this can we regain the paradise that seems so elusive for us thank you thank you thank you professor sabiha haq for talking about nazrul islam on this very important day of his birth anniversary and putting things in such a beautiful succinct manner